Hi friends, it's Jess. We're here to do another Bible discovery this morning and we're at Hillside Haven. It's one of our swing gazebos that we lovingly call swing zebos. Uh, and today we're going to be reading two stories, or as they're called in the Bible, parables, uh, from Luke. And so if you guys want to grab your Bibles with me, Luke is in the New Testament, so it's in the back. So we're going to flip towards the back and it's one of the like the big four. And so it goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So if you flip open to the back of your book and you find one of those. So I opened to Matthew, so I know Luke is two books away. So I'm in Mark, so I know he's coming up next because it's Matthew, Mark, Luke. And then once we get to Luke, we're going to look for chapter 15. So there it is. So I have a big 15 there to show me it's Luke chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 1 through 10. So it's two different stories. So the... Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 7, it's called The Lost Sheep. One day, when many tax collectors and other outcasts came to listen to Jesus, the Pharisees and teachers of the law started grumbling. This man welcomes outcasts and even eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Remember, a parable is a story. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. What do you do? You leave the other 99 sheep in the pasture and go looking for the one that got lost until you find it. When you find it, you are so happy that you put it in on your shoulders and you carry it back home. Then you call all your friends and neighbors together and say to them, I am so happy that I found my lost sheep. Let us celebrate. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 respectable people who do not need to repent. So that was our first story from Luke chapter 15. The second one is titled The Lost Coin. It's verses 8 through 10. So it reads, and this is still Jesus talking to the Pharisees and the outcasts. It says, Or suppose a woman who has ten silver coin loses one of them. What does she do? She lights a lamp, sweeps her house, and looks carefully everywhere until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says to them, I am so happy that I found the coin I lost. Let us celebrate. In the same way I tell you, the angels of God rejoice over one sinner who repents. So today's theme is uh, being rooted in joy. And in these stories, we see two instances where God's uh, telling a story about how joyful he is and these people are when they, <coughs> excuse me, when uh, they find something that they lost. And so in the first one, uh, in, in uh, verse one, uh, Jesus is talking to Pharisees or law students or people who are like really high up and prestigious people. They're kind of like the cool kids. Um, and he's talking to them and they get kind of upset because people who aren't so cool are considered outcasts. People who are sinners come and also listen to Jesus and Jesus welcomes them. And they start to grumble and Jesus goes, instead of telling them like, hey guys, that's not cool. Like we want to include everyone. He tells them two stories or two of these parables to kind of teach them the lessons uh, of like, God, you know, welcomes all of us and is joyful when we are all a part of uh, his, his stories. Um, and so in the first one, we saw the story of how God was saying, you know, if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and loses just one of them, even though he has 99 good ones, he's still going to go look for that sheep. And he's going to be so joyful when he finds it. In verse five, it says he was so happy that he carries the lamb back on his shoulders and celebrates in the same way in the second story of the lost coin. The woman, she looks over her whole house to find the one coin, even though she has nine others. She's looking just for that one, and she's so happy that she throws a party as well. She celebrates the same way that God will celebrate in us. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of uh, my plants. And so some of you may know, some of you may not. I really, 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 really enjoy planting, so I really also love being out in nature. But last year, I... Uh, found a fruit called a pawpaw and I got four seeds from that pawpaw and I was like oh man you know it would be really cool I'm gonna I'm gonna plant my own pawpaw fruit uh, and so I um, you know it's a long process you have to like do what's called stratifying them and you have to like put them in a freezer for 10 months and then you gotta like boil them for like 10 seconds and then you gotta wrap them in a cloth and then you gotta plant them and then you gotta wait four months it's a long process it takes a lot of love a lot of care um, and so I planted them and I got really excited and I was really joyful in the same way that the shepherd and the woman who had 10 coins were joyful. Uh, and I planted them and like, when they first started rooting, they were like this big and I got really excited. I took pictures, I told all my friends, I told all my coworkers, I told my family. Um, and one day I went outside to go show some of the people uh, who were at my house uh, how, how big they were. They were like this big and I like uh, showed them my, my big pot and 
I had noticed a squirrel had eaten my pawpaw plant. I was so devastated. I was so upset because, well, you know, there are lots of plants around us. We have lots of plants everywhere. We were growing lots of plants. I was really, really excited about that one pawpaw. Um, but rather than, you know, like just being sad and being like, okay, well, we lost it, it's gone now forever, I waited and I watered it and I covered it so no more animals could get in there and I took care of it and I loved it. Um, and now my pawpaws are sprouting again. They're like this big, they're bigger than they were before. And I'm, I was so excited that I like, you know, like ran through my house and was like, mom, dad, come look at this, like look how exciting this is. Um, and it, it's the same excitement that Jesus was talking about with the lost sheep and the, the lost coins. When we have something that is so important to us and like we just love and put so much care into, that it's so exciting even if one of those uh, things happens again or comes back. It's the same way that God uh, is so excited when we come back to Him or, you know, if maybe we do something that might upset Him or that's something that we think is not the best. And He, he doesn't quite mind that because He'll be excited when we come back to Him. So if you guys would pray with me, if you want to bow your heads and pray. Hey God, I wanted to thank you for allowing us to be in this beautiful space this morning to read your word. Uh, I also want to thank you for the fun opportunity that we get to have of doing Bible discovery uh, via YouTube this summer. Um, we ask that you uh, protect, protect all of us, everyone watching this, all our families, all our friends, um, and help us to, to stay rooted in your joy and to help us see that you are always joyful in us. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for doing our Friday Bible discovery with us.